In today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at green coffee bean density. We'll be answering the questions, what is it? Why is it important to a home coffee roaster? How might it change or impact the approach we have to roasting coffee? And then ultimately, how do we measure it? So stick around. <music> All right, thank you for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. What is green coffee bean density? So we're talking about the seed of the fruit, the coffee cherry fruit. The seed is what we roast and this seed is made up of a cellulose structure that has amino acids and proteins and carbohydrates and all kinds of things that make up the structure uh, and change the flavor profile of the green coffee before it's even roasted. This structure is different between a low density bean and a high density bean. A low density bean has a looser more open structure. It's a little more porous and a high density uh, seed is a very tight and compressed structure. So what causes this bean structure to be different? What causes it to be high density or low density? Well, most of you uh, assume, and you assume correctly, that altitude plays an important role. And so through altitude, we have different types of weather climates, weather environments. And the higher the density of the coffee, uh, usually the cooler the environment. The optimal environment for a high density coffee is to, between 50 and 60 degrees. And this climate is where the seed grows, but it grows slowly. It, it matures slowly, and because of that, it tends to be more sweet. The amino acids uh, play an important role in developing sweetness uh, and carbohydrates within the seed so that a high density coffee tends to be more sweet and a low density coffee tends to be less sweet. Low density coffees grow, grow faster and because of that um, they can be more profitable. We can see a season, a Brazil may have three growing seasons compared to say Colombia who might have two growing seasons or Ethiopia because of the high altitudes. All right, and then also soil, soil conditions. Now think of it this way, the seed is growing on a living plant. Soil conditions, the nutrients in the soil, even those can play a role in how the plant grows, how quickly it grows, how it gets its nutrients. And also, I've even read where the location of the seed is on the branch can influence density as well. So it's kind of crazy, and it's a pretty interesting thing to think about. I don't know that it's going to be that big of a difference in density between a seed that's grown on the outside of the branch versus the inner closer to the center of the tree portion of the branch. But apparently it gets um, more of the nutrients and being closer into the center of the tree and even that is potentially more dense than further out away from the branch. Just things that I've read as I've been preparing and doing research, um, pretty interesting concept. And then lastly, and I just touched on it a little bit, the varietal. There are some varietals that just tend to be more dense and more sweet, uh, such as a Bourbon or even a Gesha seed those tend to be a higher density coffee. Okay, so then the question that we need to ask is, why should a home coffee roaster be thinking about the density of the bean that they're roasting? And there are several reasons why we should be thinking of this. And the first and most obvious is heat transfer. Based on the density of the bean, heat is gonna take longer or a shorter period of time to be able to penetrate into and radiate into the bean. That's why you'll see, and I'm going to use extremes here just for the sake of an example, a monsoon malabar, which is a very, very low dense bean, where that takes on heat so quickly and through the roast itself, all kinds of crazy things happen with um, heat sensitivity as heat adjustments while we roast, how it reacts to just before first crack, 
and ultimately even roast times, how we're going to set up the profile. And I've just kind of thrown all this out here, but heat transfer means everything when it comes to roasting coffee. So we want to understand how long, okay, this is a dense bean or this is a low density bean. And we plan around that. We anticipate for those different uh, variables within the roasting process. We mentioned that the density of the coffee affects the flavor profile. Higher density coffees tend to be more sweet. And so we need to factor all of that in because we want to take advantage of this sweetness. We want to make sure that we um, bring out this caramelization and allow these reactions to take place during the middle phase and the development phase so that we can get all of that sweetness out of the bean. Now, there is a window of time where too much time is going to, to start to reduce that sweetness and turn towards bitterness, but too short of a time is going to do the same thing. It's gonna be extremely tart, the sugars haven't developed, and you end up with an under-roasted coffee. Also, the weight versus volume aspect of a coffee that is a high density coffee or a low density coffee you are roasting this coffee if it's in an air roaster your roasting chamber you have a low density coffee and you're weighing out the same number of grams or same number of ounces and you're throwing that into your roasting chamber or on the drum here if let's just say it's a pound you have a low density coffee that's going to be more coffee to make up that that weight you'll have a pound of monsoon malabar that will fill up a whole graduated pitcher, but on an Ethiopian that's a um, high density, it may be a third less or a quarter less volume in the drum. And that plays a role as well. So my question is to you, have you experienced any of these impacts based on density? Now, you may not have been thinking about density, and that's why I wanted to kind of ask this question now before we continue on in the talk. And that is, is that while you've been roasting, have there been roasts where you have experienced underdeveloped coffee? You roast your coffee the same way each time, but you have these strange behaviors that, that have occurred, like wow the roast took off and it just flew through and, and got to first crack a lot quicker than I thought it was going to or I roasted this the same amount of time I've always roasted my coffee but it seems underdeveloped have things like that happened to you I'd be interested to hear your comments about that because chances are density played a role in that and that's why we should be aware and thinking about density so how might we approach this differently then? If, we, if we're now in tune with the density of a coffee, how is this going to change the way we do things? Well, the first is charge temperature. Obviously, we're going to use a different charge temperature. For those who have roasters, that um, charge temperature is, is a factor. Now, there is a range, a safety range of what I'll say, where... Um, you're going to have a minimum and a maximum charge temperature range based on density and that is all about the type of roasting style you have and what roaster you're using you're going to have to figure that out for yourself on my drum roaster here my range is 365 degrees uh, up to 385 390 degrees is my range unless I'm doing something significantly different with my roast profile just the fact of having different density is going to cause me to have a different charge temperature range like I just mentioned the other point is the overall roast profile with a higher density coffee a coffee that's probably going to be a little sweeter chances are it is going to be a coffee that I might want to accentuate the acidity of the coffee and so I may approach this with a slightly shorter roast time than I would with a lower density coffee where I'm going to have a lower charge temperature and I may want to bring out uh, a little bit of the sweetness or as much as the sweetness it's the coffee isn't going to be as sweet but um, I'm going to want to take time through this process and not rush it so that I can bring out some of the other notes like the nutty notes 
or the chocolatey notes or the earthy notes. I want those to be able to come out through the bean. And so the term low and slow is kind of a picture of how we might approach a lower density bean, one that we need to be careful with the roasting defects and that we're not really looking for acidity as much as developing all of these other notes through the roasting profile that we use. And then we're going to want to use our roasts as test beds to make sure that we're within the range, the safe range of our charge temperatures. So we're going to keep an eye on roasting defects and also underdeveloped coffee. How do we detect an underdeveloped coffee? You break open the seed and you see if you've got a consistent color all the way through. If you find you've got a really dark color on the outside and a super light color on the inside, you have an uneven roast and chances are it's either over roasted or underdeveloped. All right, so how do we measure for green coffee bean density here at home? We don't have any fancy instruments, and so how do we do this? All right, before I give you that answer, I want to use this opportunity to thank you for being here and asking you to subscribe to my channel. And also hit the notification bell, that's really important so you'll be notified. But I'm encouraging you to leave your comments because that's how we learn how to roast coffee. I've had a lot of people interact here on this channel and it causes for great discussion and I've learned a lot from you guys. I really appreciate that and I hope you're learning something from me as well. So if this has been a beneficial channel for you, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed and with the notification bell on. All right, so there is an easy way for us to measure bean density. I've done some reading online and I've watched some videos. Probably one of the, the places that I heard or watched this first was on the Wolf College, Coffee College roasting channel. Um, they're in Australia and the gentleman there uses a PVC pipe. I don't have a PVC pipe handy and I wanted to just show a way to do this with something simple like a cup. So you see me here with a clear plastic drinking cup. I put it on the scale and I weigh out 250 grams of water into this cup. Now it can be a thousand grams of water if you want, if you have a big enough cup that you want to do that, but you really a 250 grams is all you need and you mark the cup at that line. So I put a, a line all the way around my cup, as you can see here, and it represents 250 grams of water. And within the metric system, translates to 250 milliliters of volume in this cup. And so we're going to use this as our standard for measuring. Empty the water out, dry the cup, put it back on the scale, tear it to zero, and pour coffee beans in to the line. I shake the cup just a little bit. You're not supposed to try to compress the beans. You just pour them in and they call it, uh, I think, free, uh, free pouring or free measurement. Uh, basically, it means that you just pour them into the container, level it off, and then you read that weight, divide it by 250. You divide it by your number that you um, have used as your standard measurement. And for me, it's 250. And then the result is a decimal, whatever the measurement is. And really, you just remove the decimal point and you have a whole number. I end up being able to compare, and that's what I did. I compared bean to bean, and I went through and I started measuring my coffee beans. And I'll just read these off to you. I um, measured a Sumatra and I got 749. A Honduran decaf got 750. Guatemalan Huawei got 746. A Colombian pink per bone natural got 746. A Kayan Mountain, which is an Ethiopian, the dry one from the previous video, got 750 for density. Colombian decaf got 761. That was surprising to me because that is gone through the decaf process and the uh, cellular structure of that bean gets really uh, impacted by the water um, pressure when they go through the decaffeina decaffeination process. Um, a Kenyan moranga at 780 
and a monsoon Malabar at 517. So that is what we'll use as our example here. The monsoon Malabar, and there was a video on that that I did, um, that it just was a weird coffee, super low density. Here's a picture of the monsoon Malabar next to the Kenyan. And you can see very clearly that the bean looks different. Between the two seeds, they're totally different. The color's different, the size is different. But look at the um, center line of the seed. Look how close and tight the center line is on the Kenyan coffee compared to that of the monsoon Malabar coffee. Also, as I mentioned on that volume, that monsoon Malabar, to put a pound of that in this roaster here, it's pretty much, it did a, it filled up the roasting drum higher than any other coffee capacity I've had, and, but I'm only putting a pound in. Comparing that to the Kenyan coffee, which is a much smaller seed. All of these factors are going to play a role in the way we roast coffee. But by using this measurement, we're able to see a number and to see, okay, well, this coffee compared to this coffee compared to this coffee has a different measurement, different density, and I should um, consider possibly a different approach to this coffee. Now, the part that's been challenging for me is that I've been looking for a scale online, and maybe you guys could uh, find it. I had a challenging time finding the scale using this numbering system for density. Wolf's video um, mentioned that there was a range, and if you've got a 700 plus number, that's considered a high density coffee. If you're 650 to 700, that's a medium high density coffee. If you're in the 500 to 600 range, you're in a low density coffee. And so that's kind of the general range, but I've just been looking around and I haven't been able to find some sort of official measurement. And that's the crazy thing. Uh, what I did notice um, doing some research is, is that from through the grading system, when these producers grade this coffee and it's coming out of a country, each country st seems to have its own standard for grading. Now, as far as specialty coffee goes, I could be wrong on this, but generally what I saw was some countries don't measure for density. Others do. And even the grading, the way that the grading is done is different from country to country. They call their grading systems, like Colombia uses Supremo or Excels Excelsio or something like that. They use those words to describe the size of their bean when maybe somewhere like in Ethiopia uses a screen number, like a 16 or an 18 to differentiate size. So there are some inconsistencies. And so if somebody can find me a great reference, um, then that would be a great tool for us. And we can compare it. We can use that as helpful information. And I think that's my main point is, and I know there's going to people that I know that there's going to be people that say, hey, Mike, you know, why this doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. And it's not the answer to all of our problems. It's not the secret or missing link uh, to coffee roasting. What it is, is it's one more piece of information that's going to help us while we roast this coffee. It may answer questions like, why did this roast take off on me? Or why does this roast seem underdeveloped? Or why does this roast always seem to be prone to roast defects? Chances are density has a significant impact on, um, on those types of issues that we come up with day to day as we roast coffee. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I would love to hear your comments, share your thoughts, and if you happen to find a reference to that uh, range, that measurement range, I would be interested in seeing that as well. So thanks for joining me today, and if you like what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time.